Welcome to Lupo's Kitchen. That's right. We are live. This is our second podcast. And you're like, wait, we knew you had a podcast. And we joked the other day. We're like, yeah, we didn't know either. We didn't. It turns out we do. <laughs> Shocking. So let's talk for a bit because we are going to get into, oh man, how to save money during these tougher times. Inflation is just gotten bad over the last two years and it's gotten really bad this year and I don't think it's getting better. It's probably going to get even worse for a little while. The dollar is getting very weak. There's some things coming. Um, they're always messing with the debt ceiling and eventually they're going to pull that card one too many times and it will derate the dollar and kind of crash it. So that's too technical for you. Just know that the the science hokey pokey they do with the dollar is they're running out of magic card tricks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Their illusions are wearing thin. They're, the people are really, really hip to what's going on and they're like, yeah, which is good and bad. Um, it's going to be a tough one. But before we get into this too deep, my name is Taryn uh, and my partner is named Lorelai, but you do not see Lorelai. She doesn't like being on film, so you'll only see her off to the side. You'll, You'll see, see her hands. hand once in a while. Her voice in your head, like a crazy person. You'll hear her chime in. So most likely, though, since this is a podcast, you're probably just putting this on the background listening. It doesn't matter. Or you're driving. And I don't really understand because YouTube started these podcasts, and I think they just convert this to audio, too. I don't know. I don't know. It's some sort of YouTube voodoo. I'm I have not, really not paid sure. attention. But we're going to – everything we put up, we're going to explain it because uh, – you know, it's, just in case you're driving, like we listen to long content when we're driving. Yeah, and, and you're not going to catch what's going on. So we appreciate you just buckling in, chilling out, and this is kind of a slow burn. And we are going to dive into a lot of tips today. Some of them you know, and then some you probably never thought of or heard. You'll be like, oh, I didn't know that. And that is because we are kind of a lifetime of cheapskates that added our two cheapskate knowledge together and made a super right. ultra now we mega are, cheapskate. <laughs> we're a superhero of cheapskates. <laughs> oh, we are cheapskates, but we're cheapskates on certain things. Like when we spend money, we, we also have a place off grid. Um, and when we spend money on our homestead, we drop some money on quality stuff. But for things like... Uh, everyday stuff, we really try to pinch the pennies to make stuff go far. We get deals. Yeah, we live on deals. and Deals and sales. Buying something at full price physically hurts us. It makes us ill. It is painful. <laughs> it hurts. So we're going to go through seven, seven tips on how to fight inflation and win. The first thing we're going to talk about, and you've probably heard this, but maybe we're going to tell you a few things that you hadn't thought of. Obviously, is to shop the sales hard. Now, you probably do this now, but because of inflation, we knew inflation was coming. And if you've listened to us before, we've been screaming about it for years, saying, buy hard, buy hard, buy hard. And we bought hard. So we were always preppers anyway, so we have a good base to go off of. We bought hard, and then everything doubled in price. And my friends that were like, you're a crazy prepper is like, dang, I wish I did that. Everything's twice as much now. Hey, you also got that rice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we bought it when it was on price. Now, if you missed that window, it's not too late because you can still catch crazy sales. So especially mid-level. Like stores still haven't caught on to the fact that they should probably quit having sales. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, supplies are dwindling. They're like, you oh, know, we the... put these ads together a year ago, so we're just going to go ahead and play them out. I I don't know a lot about the industry, but I have a feeling they make contracts with advertising firms that run all this stuff. I and they're so. like, oh, they're we bought two years it. of advertising. We have to run a sale. And this is all we know. And this is how we do. And for an extent, it does work. So if you guys know about loss leaders, they are where a company will actually lose money selling something on the hopes that you go buy all their other marked up products. So holidays. Thanksgiving by far the best because it's the first one for a while. Like you haven't really, Halloween's not really a big cooking holiday. You know, it's like candy and stuff. Yeah. But Thanksgiving, you can get so many sales on baking 
stuff and just food. Like our potatoes last year, we were getting 10 pound bags of potatoes for like $1.99. And normally they're priced pretty high. Yeah, I think right now a 10 pound is... Um, a year ago. Not last Thanksgiving, but the Thanksgiving before, we got 10 pound bags of potatoes for like 89 cents. And we really stocked up. You know, potatoes last for months. And depending where you buy, I think we bought a 10 pound at a discount store like Aldi's um, for six bucks. Yep. But normally, at, I think at Food Lion, they're eight. Yeah, I was going to say, at Walmart, they're about eight dollars for a 10 pound bag of potatoes. is eight dollars now. That's crazy. My whole life, they've been 99 cents. So we were buying them at eight times cheaper a year ago. So that's crazy because, I mean, we'd still hit them on sale. They weren't normally that price. But here's what you're going to do. You're going to look at your mid-grade stores. You're not going to really see this stuff happen at big box stores, Walmart, Costco. They rarely have sales worth a darn. Where you're going to find the, loss leaders are the smaller stores like Food Line, Kroger. Yeah, the regular grocery Publix, stores. Publix, regular grocery stores. And you're going to have to watch. But and surprisingly, Publix has some pretty good deals sometimes. Really good deals. Yeah, what, we get two for on, ones at Publix. On higher end stuff, like kombuchas, we get some really good deals on So comparatively. You're going to want to start watching, but they're predictable too. So here's the thing. We live on a lot of potatoes. We eat a, a pretty high starch diet. Sweet potatoes are pretty expensive. They're about 89 cents a pound to uh, $1.29. $1.29 now, right? During, I think they're dollar seventy nine right now. Like they're really expensive. About a week or two before Thanksgiving, they will ramp up to they'll they'll drop their price as a loss leader down to we've got them as low as nineteen cents a pound. Yeah, the first year we got them nineteen cents a pound. I think they're twenty nine cents now. The, twenty nine cents. Yeah, last line. year they were twenty nine cents. And, and these, Walmart had them lower. These things last a long time though. Like so, if you keep them in a, a steady temperature area in the dark. Potatoes will last you several months. People don't realize that. So we bought... With no prep. I mean, just let them have some air and dark, and they're good. Like, it doesn't even have to be super cold. Yeah, we have some milk crates we put them in, and we keep them in a closet, and that's enough. And we might lose maybe 1% of our potatoes. That you'll just get a weird one that rots or trips No, up. I will say the last two months of potatoes we've bought in from the store. We got a really good deal on Easter and we bought a whole bunch. Not nearly as much because, you know, we're leaving to go on a trip soon and we didn't want to have too many here. But we have had nothing but problems with them. This last batch was really oh, old, I think. We're probably going to get into that because as, you know, these food crises and these storage things and all the shipping problems really didn't go away. They just got kind of pushed to the side and quieted yeah, down. Yeah, they just don't talk about it. And people have adapted and got used to it. If you could go back and and think about all the different varieties of everything on the shelves that were full, um, they and what the prices were just a few years ago, and now you look, you have less variety, and especially the produce you buy goes rotten really fast. Like stuff that we would never even take that we would they would consider garbage or send to the food banks. They sell now. Well, and the thing is, it's not um, just like potatoes used to shrivel up and get wrinkly and kind of dehydrate. Now things go moldy and turn black liquid sludge. So I don't know what they're doing to the food. Yeah, I don't know if they're so GMO or genetically changed. because Or just maybe bad shipping. Like they weren't. Stored in cool, dry areas. Maybe oh, they just maybe. got wet and, and they get hot. infections in them and blow up. And we noticed just in the last year, the potato quality is way down. Like On we will buy and sweet 10 pounds and we probably throw out a pound and a half. And not just that, tomatoes. We had tomatoes oh, that I bought. Tomatoes from, rot like two days. That went hairy. Like they had fur on them. Yeah, and it's not our house. We have cleaned our kitchens because you're like, oh, well, maybe you had a moldy kitchen. No. So we can leave other things up there and it doesn't Well, and mold. I mean, we brew kombucha. If you had anything else, we'd have mold yeah, all over that. Yeah, we'd have mold all over our kombucha. So we're going to tell you to buy on hard on sales. And where you're going to do well on buying on sales is the dried stuff, obviously, like dried beans, dried and canned stuff, because, you know, that lasts forever. But you don't think about being able to buy long-term root vegetables. And then we keep going back to potatoes, but we buy probably 150 pounds of sweet potatoes at Thanksgiving 
And I am not joking. The first time we did this, it lasted till the next Thanksgiving. We still had sweet potatoes. They, no, you, you, they lose few, not, you lose a few. You lose. They were not primo. No. But they were by still by far completely edible. And they actually, were nineteen cents. Kind of better than the last ones we just bought fresh. Yeah, actually, the older ones. Now, if you don't have that strategy where you're like, oh, I'm not going to do that, this is always going to be, most of the time, these, these tips we're going to give you are going to be a trade-off for time. So you can either spend money and save time, or you can do some things and save money. And one of the things we would suggest is you buy your produce when it is on loss leader sale, cut it up and freeze it. Um, because, you know, if we had to, we could skin these potatoes, dice them up, Probably put them in some that was, yeah, branch them for a second and then freeze them. That was the other thing I did with that. green beans. Fresh green beans go on sale. I love them in stir fry. But right around Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, they go on sale. And you can get like, you know, those big bags of them that are already clean. Yeah. And the ends are done. I just take them out, rinse them off, dry them, and throw them in bags up in the freezer. You can just pull them out and throw a handful in your stir fry. And this also goes along with uh, same strategy for seasonal stuff. Yep. Because watermelon will go on sale. Um, you can. I don't know if you can freeze watermelon, can you? I don't think you I can. I don't think so, but we juice but it. But we like juice that. it, and you can freeze the juice. And you can juice the whole thing, the rind included. Yeah, you, you can, should. Oh, yeah. Well, that's another way to save money is to use the rinds. You, a lot of people don't realize you can use. It actually tastes a lot better to when you. For some of them, like watermelon smooth. Like a cantaloupe, I wouldn't. You would want to peel that off. Right. And while we're talking about this, I'm going to throw up a graphic here. And you know that crisper drawer on the very bottom <laughs> that you, you have all the intentions of buying good vegetables and you put it in? So if you're driving and you can't see what I'm talking about, it's a picture of like a crisper drawer. And it's and crossed out. It doesn't say vegetable crisper. No, it doesn't say vegetable crisper anymore. What's it say, baby? Vegetable hospice because that's where veggies <laughs> go to die. It's like where you put them in and you're like, oh, And you yeah. totally forget about them. I forgot we had that cabbage in there and it's like a goo when you find it. You always forget. So, um... To avoid the, the vegetable hospice, <laughs> to avoid the, the vegetable hospice, you want to, uh, this is a good time to also use a freezer. We, we get really lazy about freezing our stuff, but we should, you know, and, and it does save a lot of money. It really does. Actually, and it really, if you take you one or on two sale. days and do it, it saves you a lot of time down the road too. Oh, For a yeah. long time, remember, we did the cheese sauce, the potatoes and the carrots. We had them all peeled, chopped, ready to go, measured out, and we just had to grab a bag out of them. So if you check out our channel, we have a cheese sauce recipe. And I, I, when I'm really eating clean, I eat the heck out of this stuff. And what Lorelai's talking about is it's kind of a pain because I got to sit down and peel potatoes for 20 minutes. I got to chop vegetables. So when I'm, I sacrifice, it's kind of like batch cooking. I, I sacrifice a few hours and make batches and weigh them out and put them all in bags in the freezer. And then it's awesome because it takes me like 10 minutes to make that sauce, you know, once we throw it in and... It, everything's chopped, all the prep work's done. So, yeah. Frozen fruit and veggies go a long way. Long way. So grab the kids and some peelers and attack, attack it and save some money because it really is a good way to... I mean, we buy everything on sale and we buy large amounts of it. I will say that Walmart every once in a while does have sales. Remember last summer week on the watermelons were like four dollars for those giant watermelons. Yeah, they, they do. Had too and, many the mangoes, of them. and the mangoes, the mangoes were like thirty were like cents or something. Twenty-five cents. Yeah, they were four cents. for a dollar. And we when you find that stuff, man, buy as much as you can process and freeze them. And that's what we did. Oh, we buy hard when we see that stuff. Uh, the other thing I always get is. Cherries are insanely expensive, but then at 4th of July, when they come to season, they drop down that. They always do a loss leader of like four bucks. Yep. And man, when that happens, I buy the heck out of those things and I will pit those things and freeze them, you know, because I love cherries and they're so expensive. Also, though, this is a weird thing. Some of the frozen fruit is actually way cheaper to buy. So at Walmart. I'm still getting because they they a, freeze it when it's in season. A forty eight uh yeah forty eight ounce bag of blueberries for like seven forty eight or seven ninety eight something like that. It's like yeah. right around eight bucks for and that's what three pounds. Four and pounds? that's not even worth our time to, like to four buy pounds of fresh and freeze them at that price. I mean we can get a practically a sale price. Well I just time. saw them they were a pint. Yeah. For two bucks. And and that was on sale and they didn't look good. And we're not huge fans of Walmarts, but they do save us a lot of money. But we did find a hack for the uh, 
saving a lot of money was to join the the yearly club. What's it called? The Walmart. The Walmart Shop. Plus. Walmart Plus. We they, have saved a ton of money using that. And well, they give you a Paramount Plus account with it. Um, oh, yeah. Last yeah. year it was I got six months of Spotify for free. Spotify Premium. But where we really... But the delivery. The delivery was... We saved so much money on delivery because, you, you know, and the time of going out and spending gas not and Not just that. When you go to the store, you're like, we never want to come here again, so let's just spend a whole bunch of money yeah. all at once and get it done. Whereas I need... A, it has to be $35 for the delivery to be free. Oh. Walmart yeah. is not happy with us talking about this. <laughs> they shut down my light. All right. I'll fix this. Go ahead. It's this bad. Um... Oh, the battery's empty. It was charging the whole time. No. That's so strange. This is a Walmart battery. See? Uh -huh. <laughs> so Walmart is, um, it's it's gotten to the point where we used to use this app. And because we just hate the soul-sucking experience of going there, but then they started giving cashback rewards and they started um, refunding and giving us and upgrading our stuff. I don't think they do it anymore. Do they? They don't upgrade like they used to. Um. No, they don't. Sometimes they will. But I don't know um, if it's their policy like before. Where... Mostly, what they do now oh. is so if you have any problem with anything, like we had a whole bunch of steel cut oats delivered, but they shipped them instead of instead they didn't have them at the store, so they shipped it, and one of them was bashed open. But you can easily Go ahead. have them. Uh, sorry, the light was just. It's just too distracting. <laughs> for, right. um, your beauty blinded me. <laughs> um, they they will refund anything that's damaged. No questions asked. Food wise, they don't care. Like if we get like the tomatoes that we got, I bought like twenty tomatoes so we can make our soup. And then they all, like, grew hair and were gross the next day. And I just, like, put in a refund and they're like, so sorry, here's your refund back. Like, they don't even question it. So I think that the stores know that. Oh, we, we saved a lot of money on that. But so there's, because we the don't, because, I mean, how refunds. often are you going to get back in the car and drive back to the store? No, I wouldn't for a tomato. We'd be like, yeah, we're just not eating the soup. You know, we, and we just I, be mad. I just you know, hate like, going there. So that, we get the free delivery, and but I only have to buy $35 worth of groceries. Which we do easily in one week. The, you know. Yeah, that's easy. Not a big deal. Okay, so we've talked about the first thing of... Um, shop sales. Shop hard. Oh, I forgot to mention this part. Around us, and probably you, if you live anywhere like in a suburbia or, or you're not completely out in the sticks, you will have a liquidation store. And what that is, is a store that buys like pallets. It'll be damaged boxes. Uh, some of them will be expired. It'll be like expired cans and stuff. And and we go to one and here. And there's a lot of dented cans. Just stay away from them. You know. If you look around, like try to find, it's called like liquidation or pallet stores. And you might just ask around online. Somebody knows of one. We found one by accident here that is amazing. They're everywhere. When I was in Atlanta, I used to go to two or three of them. You know, like they they were little tiny shops. You know, somebody's side hustle where they were selling stuff off a of pallet. But every once in a while, we get something really healthy there. Every we once in a while, you get something. You get a really big store. We have a really big one, and this one, we get some really high end stuff there for a dollar. Now, if you're just trying to save food and you're not worried about losing weight and nothing healthy. You can crush it at those places. If you're like us where you're real particular about your diet and you're trying to lose weight, it's a little harder. But we do find even basics there. Like we got an amazing deal on damaged boxes of oatmeal where the, you know, the packaging was messed up. But oh, they the were boxes, fine inside. The boxes were all messed up, but the bags were But the bags fine. were still sealed in plastic inside or, you know, crushed cereal or something. Uh, grits. Grits. We got like oh, yeah, 200 we got pounds of grits for like nothing. For like 20 bucks. It was ridiculous. So... Every once in a while, these places, especially if you're trying to prep and you're getting ready for hard times coming, these are great solutions. Find your local liquidation store. Here in Myrtle Beach, ours is called the Save More Superstore. Yeah, we love it. So if you happen to be down South Carolina, it is worth the drive. It is an amazing store. It's like the size of a old Kmart, but just 
everything's discounted like crazy. It's it's awesome, and it changes every week. You don't and know they have a ton of. They actually have like building supplies and yeah. outdoor furniture and indoor furniture and. We uh, spent money on all kinds of things. They there. have tons of stuff. Your chair came from there. Yeah, the one I'm sitting in <laughs> right now. Advertisement. Sponsors save more. <laughs> Sponsor our podcast. All right. Um, the next thing I'm going to say, and this is kind of going to lead into a few different things. Actually, we'll, we'll start with this other one too. Let's jump over to number two. I would say grinding your own flowers and buying dried beans. So if you're eating healthy, the ratio of dried beans to canned beans, price-wise, while the convenience, and don't get me wrong, because we have a whole pantry full of canned beans. Especially when we're going back and forth to the homestead, it's just so much easier. But there are easy ways to do the dried beans too. Batch cook them, stick them in the yeah. freezer. And it's it's significant, and they last forever. Dried beans last forever. Dried beans last forever, like twenty years. That's ridiculous. And they're just, I mean, they're more than double the price value wise, you know. So it's just, it's well worth it to do dried beans. And I, they're probably better for you. They are because, you know, the... You don't know what water they're using. The water in the can is probably like... Tap water. Tap water, fluoride, ghetto water, whatever. And Leech then water. They're cooked inside a plastic bag inside the cans. Mm -hmm. Even though they say they're BPA-free cans and all this stuff. Um, well, that's just one chemical out of the 6,000 that yeah, plastic's made out of. Yeah, it's not the best. Now, we have, don't get us wrong, we have a whole bunch of cans because they're convenient. But when we're really trying to stay healthy, we we try to we switch over. We to switch it. to dry, like that stuff is more prepper and convenient. And it's just value wise, you're gonna save so much money. It really is, and especially if you eat a lot of beans. We eat a lot of beans. Now maybe beans ain't your jam, but flowers. Like if you start using the recipes on our our channel, we're gonna open up a whole bunch of batch recipes using oat flour. We've we've oat, cracked the code. Oat flour is ridiculously expensive to buy, and you're going to like. The only places that really have it. I mean, there's some stores that have it, but it's hit or miss whether your store is going to have it in stock. Yeah. Um, whereas you can buy oatmeal for $4 for that, you know. Like a big thing of oatmeal. A big thing of oatmeal. We grind our own because I think a little bag was like $6. At least. Uh, and it, we calculated... Oats was, I think, about, we save about four to one on that. We figured out the pricing that yeah, the, for every um, dollar we would spend on on oat flour, it would only cost us 25 cents to make our own. And then I think the ratio was one cup of oats makes like one and a quarter cups of flour. Yeah, it actually adds air into it and it, it, it gets bigger and not less. Um, oat flour, great way to save money. And we actually did a video, if you go check our channel on cream of rice rice flour is pennies compared to what they charge oh, it is yeah, a complete like, rip off to buy cream of rice you can get rice anywhere for a dollar for a pound rice you flour know, like, oh my god but so cream, cream of rice was like what was it like 427 like 427 or for three cups of rice grounded up and uh it, it is we did the math on that if you go watch that and it was we were getting our stuff for pennies Compared yeah, it's to. ridiculous. So it's grinding, basically, it's all, it's all but free to eat it if you just grind your own. Grind your own flowers. And if you're like, well, I don't have a Cuisinart or anything, we got a tip for you. Everybody stopped cooking <laughs> and they are all over the thrift stores. I bought a Cuisinart for three bucks at a yep. thrift store. Three bucks. You know, just shop around. They might be 10 at where you're at. And right? honestly, what go we, ask your mom because she has one she hasn't used in 20 years up in the cab. We also have that. <laughs> we go we go shop at my mom's house all the time for old appliances she doesn't cook anymore but honestly you can use a magic bullet yeah a 20 dollar blender from walmart will if you especially if you get the flat blade we grind our oat flour in the magic bullet and it does a better job than our cuisinart it's just a way simpler process too there's yeah. less pieces there's and you want the flat blade like she's talking about it's, it's like a little attachment blade i went with a flat blade that's a really good savings now Let's jump over to number three. Number three is to go on a whole foods diet or do fasting. Now, this is going to seem pretty simple because usually when you switch diets, you actually spend more money because you have to buy all new spices, all new supplies, all new everything. And a lot of people um, are on the go and they buy prepackaged stuff. So they switch from one brand of package to a lower 
calorie or a keto version or a they're still the buying packaged choice, food. You know, meals that are like four dollars a piece, and you need six of them because they're so tiny. Right. Yeah. The the shrinkflation has made the packages this big, and you got a family of four. You know, it's just not gonna happen. Even if it's just you eating, have you seen that? Like the portions are like mm. a quarter of a cup. You know, like no, nobody's getting full on that. Nah. So you end up spending a lot more, and processed food is just expensive unless it is just dirt ghetto awful for you like and you know honestly so far the only processed food that i have found that is even compliant for us is the boca burger the vegan boca burgers vegan boca burgers maybe check cereal something like that but it's probably gmo jacked out you know we have different stages of this in a perfect world where i had lots of money i wouldn't buy anything processed gmo i would try to buy organic everything um, but Lorelai likes to remind me all the time that half the organic stuff out there is fake anyway, and it's not real. So you're just kind of blowing money for blowing money. Unless you grow it yourself, well, you don't know I what, mean, I, what you're buying. I can grow organic hemlock. It doesn't make it good for you. Yeah, it's you true know, too. I don't care how organic your sunflower oil is. You still get organic diabetes. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's the same thing. So we, uh, we're going to tell you that if you switch to a whole food diet, it is more cooking. It takes more time. It doesn't have to be. You can eat we raw have, foods. Well, and we have tons of tips and tricks, too, for cutting time back. Lots of... And that'll come later in the money saving. Yeah, lots of more tricks. But switching to a whole foods diet, even when they jack potatoes twice and three times the price, we, for we're several, still way under than what we were buying. There was three months where we were still buying potatoes for $8 for 10 pounds. And it was still way cheaper than what anybody else was buying. Yeah. If you're buying chicken and... Like, we would when we were not compliant and getting fat... Or just even the, the junk food, vegan junk food. Vegan junk food's crazy expensive. The cheese is and crazy it's, expensive. it's the... almost half the price as it was three years ago. It's actually yeah. because there's so more, so many more options, but it's still outrageous. Still outrageous. It's $4 for a little bag of, you know, baked chicken nuggets or... Um, we can, again, I, I, I hate to go keep going back to beans and potatoes, but those are your, like, dirt cheap staples. And even if they jack the price up on that, for a hundred bucks, we could feed both of us, our whole family, probably for a month. Yep. If we cooked everything from scratch, we could. When we were not worried about our diet and getting fat and just eating whatever we wanted to eat, a hundred bucks would not even be a week of food. That was one trip to Publix. It would be like, you and know. And don't let them have a sale. We Get the Gardein burgers and we need buns for the, the burgers and we need the, the cheese for the burgers and we need the mayo and we need this and that. We make all that stuff now. So. And it is, depending on how involved you want to get in making, if you're trying to recreate all your favorites down to a T, you're going to spend some money on spices and things and you so know, making. You know, we're seven weeks in now to being off of all processed food and except for the one dumpling. No, I realize that, yeah. We're seven weeks in, and I still have not had bread. I still haven't. I think the only bread we buy is the kid goes through one thing of bagels. That's two dollars. Yeah. One thing of bagels a week. That's a lot cheaper. If that. And we allow ourselves to have anything we want if we make our own versions of it. If we want bread, we can make our own sourdough bread. Oh yeah, I'll make sourdough bread well, we if gotta I really it. want it, but I have to make it, and I don't want it that bad. That's. That's the hook is we don't say no. You can have whatever you want. You got to make it. And then that, that really. And actually, you know, we have like two huge boxes of Boca burgers. I still haven't touched those. Well, what's funny is. I just haven't craved them. We sort of migrate to laziness of either we batch cook and have meals ready or we just start eating more raw stuff. Like we're just eating more fruit. And I'm like, ah, I don't want to cook something. Oh, like nine you times know. out of ten. Like if I it's just had a grapefruit today because I just didn't feel like. That's what anything. every morning you notice I grab a banana. I don't have yeah. to do anything to it. So as you go longer and longer, the simpler and simpler your diet gets. And we're going to talk here because we're going to expand on this. Okay, so what are we on? Three, we're going to four. And um, I'm going to throw this in here right now because some of these all have to do with the diet. Is eating raw saves money. And then also you forget there's hidden costs like electricity. So when you cook from scratch certain things like using an Instapot, a rice cooker, a sun oven, or using, if you live in cold weather, you can freeze stuff on your porch. Or if you're cooking on a wood stove, you can use like wood. We use the sun oven like crazy when we're homesteading just because, you know, we have to create our own power from solar. 
So to save power, we used a sun oven. And that is an unseen cost of this food. So like you were talking about, when you used to make, eat meat and make roast, how long did you have to leave a roast in the So oven? a roast goes in the, the roast with potatoes and carrots and, you know, the whole, you know, pot roast thing. That's like four hours of cooking. That's four hours your oven's on. Yeah, cooking a turkey at Thanksgiving. Oh, that's all damn. It, all day. Like, it's ridiculous. So how much electricity does it take to run an oven for eight hours? Now, if you're, if we were you cooking know. batch, you know, we cook a lot every day, even just reheating stuff. But when we first, like, if we were, if we had to boil the potatoes on the stove, that takes, like, an hour, and it's way more water, it's way more washing pots. We do everything in the pressure cooker. It's quick. It's 10 minutes. Yeah. So this is some of the things. You're going to have to invest a little money up front on appliances, and again, go to the thrift store. It's loaded with Instapot and pressure cookers. Now, you're never going to find the sun oven in there that's maybe a, not that's a that's a i did hear a story item. though that somebody picked one up at a yard sale for 50 bucks i know uh, i was like uh dude sun ovens are expensive but if you're gonna buy an oven anyway instead of just blowing money because they're about a good one like the all-american ones 400 dollars on sale 500 normal but they last 30 years. They don't There's break down. no moving parts. No moving the only parts. thing you have to do is worry about the seal once in a while. Yeah, you might need a new rubber seal every 5, 10 years. You know, um, that's it. Where you're buying a new stove every 10 years. Yeah, that's it. So, man, like, for what a, a stove costs and an appliance and, heck, on, even on electricity, you probably... All right, so we have a lot of friends. We lived in New Hampshire. We have a lot of friends in New Hampshire. Their electric bill went up three hundred dollars in one month and went up another two hundred and like two months later. So their bill is five hundred dollars more a month than it used to be. And it was already. And I'm like, for like five hundred dollars, I can buy a sun oven and knock that bill way down. You know, we can cook outside because even the winter you can cook outside. Um, we're off gridders too. You know, we we like to live off grid when we can. The homestead and we're. Uh, we're always watching electricity of how much does it take. And I can't imagine in my life being like, yeah, go ahead and use the oven for eight hours to cook a turkey. I'd be like, are you out of your mind? You know, well, we're going to figure out a way to do this. We were, they were like, oh, well, you know, this and the power bill went up. I was like, oh, if we were up in New Hampshire, the refrigerator wouldn't even be plugged in in the winter. No. Like, and there is ways to do that. So we talked about in the winter, you can put coolers so on the what outside. What we always did was we snow. had a, a mud room. Which is like um, that that outdoor indoor outdoor room where you come in and you take all your muddy boots off and your coats and everything and hang in. Um, it's always cold in there, like way cold, but not freezing. And we would just keep coolers in there with the condiments and stuff. Most the only thing that needs to be refrigerated is meat and dairy that really needs it. Like most produce isn't actually supposed to be refrigerated. So we had the deep freezes on our our you know my family compound. Tons of deep freezes. But the refrigerator, like one refrigerator at my grandma's house, that was like for 40 people. So the old school refrigerators actually eat a lot of electricity. The new one's a little better. But the biggest, besides like an electric water heater and a heat pump in your house, the refrigerator is the third. The refrigerator is always trying to it's maintain just... its temperature. And a dirty refrigerator, if you don't ever get under there and, and wipe out all the dust every uh, six months or so, it kicks the compressor <laughs> on over and over and over, and it runs your bill through the roof. So if you're like, man, I mean, we just got this huge electric bill. It's because you have a dirty refrigerator, probably. So there That's is a, big part of it. a solution, and this might be a weird for you guys to think about, but it's to get rid of your refrigerator and buy the little solar refrigerators. So we have off-grid coolers. They 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 look just like coolers you pull around. They're small. Uh, they cost about three hundred dollars, and they're electronic, and you can turn the temperature up and down. And they take almost a, no power. Well, and it has a split too. You can use half of it as a tiny little freezer, or you can use the whole thing as a freezer, or you can use the whole thing as a fridge. They're called bodegas, but yeah. for the price of uh, you know, people are buying a fridge now for twenty five hundred dollars. You can buy like three or four bodegas if you wanted. But even here in fraction. South Carolina, for fraction. like three months, we don't even have to use it. Like no, we, don't, just... we take it to temp in the day and then it holds its temperature all night. So it's not even plugged in all night long. It's just because it's a cooler. So this might be a weird thing to think about, but you know, your food takes electricity to cook. And 
and that and is a store. huge expense right now. The the electric's going through the roof in some parts of the country. And the store and the keep. And the, like she was saying, the deep freezers don't take much electric. A solar refrigerator cooler thing like we're talking about. And the about, fuller your freezer is, the less power it takes. Like it'll hold that temperature so much easier if it's full. So even fill it with what? Like water bottles and mm -hmm. stuff if it's empty? And that's also if your power goes out. For, I mean, way back in the day when I still, you know, had a freezer full of meat, we lined it with two liter soda bottles along the bottom and a couple mixed in through it. And I had one of those giant chest freezers. And that thing stayed, and we were in Louisiana when the power went out for a week and a half, and it was perfectly fine. Because you had big, I giant didn't ice blocks. I did a thing yeah. in it. And, and, we just, and you just don't open it. Yeah. Don't open it. And even with a deep freeze, if you have any sort of solar connection, um, even, this is a little hack you can do, you know, you have inverters that you can put in your car cigarette lighter. You can run an extension cord out the door run that car for like an hour, charge all your electronics and charge your deep freeze for an hour, put a little frost on everything. And that thing will hold all day. Yep. You know, like you can get away. So there, there's a lot of good reasons, but we're to get back to this going on a plant-based whole food diet. You don't have to take your temperatures low on the fridge. So that saves money right away. If it's meat and dairy that goes bad and gets sick. 50 degrees, 50 to 55 is fine for most of that. Like most condiments, vegetables. everything like they don't really need that. Very few problems. You don't have to. It's a lot of, if you go watch like homesteading channels. Um, 90% of their energy goes to, to figuring out how to keep meat and dairy. Like I have to have these chestfuls of freezers of meat and meat and meat and meat. And, and it's just, it's not sustainable and very well. And the stress well, of easily. trying to find the feed for the livestock. And, and the, yeah. like, it's just not sustainable. It's not. So that's a good way. Um, let's see. What else did we say? So just changing your diet. Also, we mentioned fasting. If you're trying to clean up your diet, I'm a, I like fasting, but you can save a lot of money just eating every other day. You know, you're I mean, eating yeah, half the food. Yeah, you did that for, what, a year? Yeah, just, just eating every other day. Or even intermittent and you fasting. Lost, like next to nothing. And so like yeah, you can keep your... You don't lose much so weight, Even in a survival situation, you don't really... But you can save a lot of money if you just... It, it's a, a Fasting's a good way. It's a free way to take down your bills. A lot of people don't talk about it. Um, on the same note, we're going to go into the fifth thing here is uh, cheap alternatives to eggs, oil, and butter. And this is another reason to go on a plant-based diet is because eggs and butter are crazy expensive and getting hard to get. And if you do get them, they're very low quality. Like most of the eggs are not what they were. They're like the vegetables right now where they're not what they were. You the know, quality they're, is they're, not great. Everything, the quality is going down on everything right now. And I think that is a lot to do with a low quality of food that the livestock is getting and bad shipping. Like, if you don't have refrigerated shipping for eggs, you're... Oh, yeah, forget it. And and you're starting to play with your health, too, messing around with that stuff if it's heated up and cooled off. And, and honestly... It's not... I mean, you can get sick with vegetables, but the chances are a lot less that, you know, them going up and down in temperature. They're going to have all wilty dead vegetables when it arrives. You're going to be like, no, you're not going to eat it. It's going to be obvious. Yeah. But eggs, not well, so much. You don't know. You don't know. Um, Unless it's really bad, you don't know. Like, but a lot of the cooking we do, and especially on our channel, we never use eggs or butter or anything like that. Or oils. Oils get crazy expensive, too. And they go rancid. And they are one of the first things to spoil. Absolutely. And any it of is your hard food that is in oil. the oil will spoil first. And stuff cooked in a lot of oil. You know, like the the cereals that have a bunch of oil always go bad before the ones that are just yep. like rice jacks that doesn't have any. And I'll get that funky taste. and You definitely know. And then you'll get sick. But Remember, yeah. I, I bought a bag. This is what I was eating, trash food. Um, I bought a bag of Funyuns. Oh, yeah, in the car. And it, like, and it smelled like gasoline. Like gasoline. Like diesel. And then I bought another bag to see if that was a weird thing. And it, the, the other one went rotten. They were, the oils had turned in them. It was disgusting smelling. And it, it, smelled, like like it smelled the whole car up. Like we thought yeah, gas filled. That was filled. really bad. Uh, yeah. Well, well, so we don't eat trash food anymore. So there are a million substitutes for oil. And, and they're cheaper. And usually. Eggs. Way cheaper. And they're shelf stable. Our bag of flaxseed, we have had over a year, right? Because we use yep. a spoonful at a time. 
And honestly, I just keep it in the fridge, but you could easily keep it in the freezer. And the only reason I keep it in the fridge is this was a mistake that I got from Walmart. I ordered whole flax seeds and they sent me ground. Yeah. Which they were happy to refund me for. Read. But so it's just I put it in a jar and put it in the freezer. And we're still using it. It's been like a year now. Some tips for this, though. I'm going to give you my ta my flaxseed knowledge. It will go rancid um, if you grind seeds and hold them too long, especially if they're not in the fridge. I say it, they will last a really long so time if you don't stick it in the freezer. Grind them until you need them. But you can buy, especially if you watch the sales. Hit the sales. Even Amazon has sales on these things. Um, you can get like you know a two pound bag of flaxseed, and that is more egg than you're going to use in two years probably. Oh yeah, because you know, one egg is one tablespoon of ground flaxseed. Where if I bought two years of eggs to cook with, that's a lot of eggs. And well, so and, and they go bad. Then it's got to be freeze dried powder. And you so gotta you've spend got... the money to keep them cold and the refrigerator room and all that oh, stuff. Oh well, you can't keep eggs for that long. I mean, you can keep them for a couple you months. Can't. I mean, but not real. Like you have to if you want long term storage for eggs, you have to get the freeze dried powder. You know, like the reconstituted. That's true, and that's not and... stupid expensive. If you can even find it. That's really expensive. All the preppers bought that stuff out. And a lot of people will, I'm sh I can already see in the comments now, well, we have our own chickens and we hold our own eggs. And if you don't wash them, you're good. And that's true. You probably can leave, if you don't wash the eggs, they last a long time. And if you're watching this and you have your own chickens, you're you're probably okay. You know, like, you. but these are 99% of people out there don't have chickens. And they're well, trying and to find a way to cut. And, and, and you can use egg replacer just as much. For any sort of baking or dishes, and I think the flaxseed actually works better than eggs. It eggs works are actually really well. not really. There's been so many times where I just didn't have enough eggs for a recipe when I baked. For you know, I had a baking business, like a, a side hustle business, and I would around the holidays I would bake for people, and there were so many times I would run out of eggs and just didn't have time to go to the store. I have like three people coming to pick orders of them, just didn't put them in. Just like mash up a banana and stick in there, and they'd be like, "This is just the best cake," and. Yeah. It really makes almost zero difference. You and wouldn't think it would be that way because I was very skeptical. I was, you know, I was really worried the first few times that I tried that, but it just, it's no different. What's your go-to to save money on oil? Because oil has gotten stupid expensive. So my go-to is always applesauce. And everybody says use unsweetened, but I'm not going to lie. I've used cinnamon applesauce numerous times in the brownies and I think they're better. Um, applesauce is great. Uh, you can use a banana for oil. Um, cauliflower can actually be an egg substitute. You, um, steam it and then puree it into like, you know, basically cauliflower liquid and it makes a great egg replacer. There's no taste to it. Everybody thinks that Cauliflower has a, a strong taste because I think they equate it because most people eat it with broccoli and broccoli has a much stronger taste. Cauliflower has almost no taste or flavor at all when it's cooked separately. That's good to know. It just picks up. Um, the other one is pumpkin. You can use pumpkin. Pureed pumpkin is a great oil or carrot, replacer. Probably. Um, or no, carrot probably. You can, you can. It would work if you were doing like carrot cake or something like that. Carrot has a pretty strong taste. Yeah. Pumpkin, you think, does, but it really doesn't. If you're not worried about losing weight, can they use ground nuts, or does that not turn out right for oil? Um, no, if you're not worried about losing weight, what you would use is um, like an almond flour. Almond flour. And Almond flour has some fats in it from the, from the almonds, and it actually has a ton of fat from, like, it's crazy. Like, I think a cup of flour has, like, 30 grams of fat or something. It's... A lot. It's a lot. Like we don't mess with, you know, this channel is mainly about weight loss and uh, and eating health, you know, uh, um, oil-free weight loss recipes, plant-based oil-free weight loss recipes. I cannot say it today, <laughs> but um, so we don't mess with oils or, and I was going to get to this is um, we don't really mess with nut flours either. It has to be a special occasion if we use like a cashew butter or something like that. But I, we, it's just not good for weight loss. You're not gonna. It isn't, and the only thing that I'm messing with, lose weight really the only thing stuff. I will mess with nuts with right now, and it's not even for us, it's for the kid, is I will make cashew cheese. Yeah. And it, there's certain occasions, like we use it as a special occasion thing. We don't, we don't keep it in the house all the time. No, I make time. like a. Because 
I'll if make I have a, a choice. A I'm batch eat it. for Friday pizzas for, her, and she'll eat pizza on Friday, that's and it. that's it. So we use it conservatively. I'm not completely against nuts, but it's not great for weight loss. If you're eating it every day, you're gonna stall big time. The um, other thing is, you know, I was gonna say we substitute butter, and the way we do that is we just draw butter out of our lives. We get nonstick pans, we get parchment paper, and getting rid of butter saves a fortune. Well, and you'll so, be like, how can I do this? You know, and you can use my nutritional biggest, yeast for the kind of flavor. So my biggest thing giving up butter for was bread and butter. But I just dip that in my soups anyway. And I've noticed that if I have fresh, good sourdough bread, I don't really miss it. The only thing I miss it in is like garlic bread. But that is like greasy, yeah. nasty garlic bread. And that's just something I can't recreate. You recreate that thing. So I just, it's just not in our diet anymore. I'm happy to give that one thing up. It's yeah, just not that big a deal. There's a little bit of sacrifice you have to do if you want to lose weight and giving up, you know, like you can do a garlic bread, but it won't be the, the garlic bread that's the dre greasy, drippy butter. It's just going to be garlic toast. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to so, be garlic bread. But it's like be, toast. My toast, toast with garlic powder on it, you know. You know, I, I toast and tea salt. in the morning all winter long is my thing and before bed, but I don't even miss it on that. Like, I just put jam or apple butter on everything anyway, and you cover it up. So you really don't need that butter. So you save you save a lot of money. Again, it, like, for these tips like are all about plant butter here. switching to whole foods and keeping it cleaner. And the cleaner you eat, the simpler you eat, the more you save. The more and the processed, healthier you are. Too, yeah, like. it's, it's great for your health and it's great for your waistline. You know, and, and your insides and your cholesterol and all that stuff gets better and better. Um, and this kind of rolls into one of our last things here. Not only do we make our own flowers and we make our own food, but we make our own beverages because people spend a stupid amount of money on their drinks. Soda is crazy expensive now. It's so and bad for it's you. It's so bad for you. And people buy that stuff for their kids. And if and you, I mean, there is like. It's awful. Every once in a while, you know, we'll let the kid have uh, that stevia soda. Yeah. But that stuff's like eight dollars for a six pack. It's <laughs> and I remember, you know, they were buying the um oh man, they're like flavored waters. They they say they're flavored with essence and it was just like tonic. Water. Oh, like LaCroix. La yeah, LaCroix or whatever. Um, you know, that stuff just seltzer but it's waters, expensive. but it's not seltzer. It's just it's, it's carbonated, so... it's mineral water with carbonation and But if you want to go that route, you can buy a that is carbonating soda machine and you can make your own spritzers and own that for a fraction of the price too so you know my thing was that was the biggest thing i missed was the carbonation i don't care about the soda it was the carbonation i needed and so we switched to kombucha when we were trying to heal your gut we gave that a shot which it worked you know like worked good and you can make kombucha taste like anything kombucha was and it's gotten really good yeah we're going to do a and whole story on how to brew your own kombucha, but how much money do we save from brewing our own kombucha? It is by far the most cost-effective thing to make yourself that we do. It's better than the rice cereal. Yeah. So a six-pack of kombucha, uh, Kavita, is $15.48. Now, every once in a while, you can find like a, a two-for-five... But I think the the six pack is probably the cheapest one. Yeah, so let's let's ballpark it. Say somewhere between two fifty to two eighty for a little bottle. Um, so that's really expensive. That's way more than soda. So to brew it for a half gallon, it's you put you know seven cups of tea in. That's four tea bags. I get four. We get a hundred tea bags for two dollars and twelve cents. And then we put half a cup of cane sugar in there. The cane sugar, I get eight pounds for six dollars. So, we so are even talking... using the expensive sugar, it's n almost free compared to how much kombucha is. And if bottle. we want them flavored, like one bottle probably costs what the whole thing made. Oh, less, less. You're talking pennies for we make twenty, at least twenty-one bottles a a, a batch. And that is six times four, 24 tea bags. 24 so tea bags, so less than a buck, that's cents. a quarter. Yeah. That's about 50 cents, oh, yeah. so they're about $2 for 50 cents. 
It's 50 cents, and you probably got about 50 cents of sugar in it, so maybe a buck. It's stupid. Now, there are setup costs because we were buying kombucha and we saved the bottles. You need special bottles that can handle pressure, like brewing bottles. But that was trash. I mean, that was free stuff we had already bought. We'd that already we bought it. Throw and we out. just kept all the bottles. We just kept all the bottles. And then to actually start the kombucha, you need to buy some kombucha at the store. And the process takes like a month or so to build a, a SCOBY hotel. Um, we'll do a video on that if you're really interested. In it. Or you're probably like watching this. There's probably people going, man, I don't even drink kombucha. I don't care. We'll start to because <laughs> it is so good for your gut. Oh, my God. It, it healed so many digestive problems. I'm like a, a, a preacher about it now. It's and, crazy. And the way you flavor it is you can flavor it with anything. Because I didn't like kombucha. I was like, man, this tastes like vinegar garbage. And we started finding ones that were flavored where they tasted like just bubbly fruit juice. And I was like, oh, these are awesome. You know, it totally changed my whole opinion. So well, you can and mess you had with the whole it thing. Until... You were like, no, we cannot do kombucha. You're going to get fat. Like, make you gain so much weight. Oh, yeah. The calorie content's crazy. And I was like, no, it's not. Like, what are you talking about? And I so have... I actually had to come show you. That the calories are like, I'm like, this bottle of kombucha is like 40 30 calories, calories yeah. 40 calories. And you're like, what? I had I'd always heard that. that told me, and I had some patients that were like, I started drinking kombucha and got fat. And now I'm like, I wonder how much sugar they put in or how maybe they didn't process it right. Or, or were they making their own or were they? Were they just, were they buying ones with a bunch of good gar garbage added? I don't, I don't know, but I don't know how you got fat drinking that when it's 40 calories. It's tea. It's based because the sugar in it gets eaten by the bacteria. It's the other like thing alcohol. is, did they use it as a mixer? Yeah, if you know. use it as a mixer with alcohol, oh, I didn't alcohol know is incredibly fattening. Now, there's a tiny little bit of alcohol in the kombucha. And actually, the way we brew it, you don't even have to have that necessarily if you cut it off on the second brewing. Yeah. Sometimes we drink it straight out of the first brewing. and Some of it's really good. Um, a lot of times, so my thing was the carbonation. I have noticed that I can drink it. It gives me the same mouthfeel as the carbonation just from the vinegar no. tingle. So we're going to tell you to start brewing your own drinks or, again, buy a soda machine if you're going to stick with the sodas. Make your own at least. Make it a healthy version the best you can. Uh, so these things cost money up front, but they save so much money in the long run. I look at it the same way as like buying a cell phone or getting a cell phone plan. But honestly, like the people will be like, Oh, my Verizon gave me a free swell phone. Yeah. They, they subsidize that thing. So your, your phone bill is ridiculous for five years. So you can pay for this $1,300 phone, right? Buy a hundred dollar phone and get a $25 service. Yep. It's the same thing. You got to shell out a little money first on appliances and then you save a fortune on the maintenance and eating right. And it's really good for your body. Yeah. Don't drink soda. Yeah, just, just like, be healthy. I told you the whole thing I did, like somebody who said like how bad soda was. So I tried it, and for like two months I cut out just brown soda, like because I love Dr. Pepper. Mm -hmm. Just And I still was drinking Sprite and seltzers, <laughs> and I lost like 60 pounds. It was so it is ridiculous. So, so In three months, 60 pounds. Like that's 20 pounds a month. And it's really it's addicting. Soda. Remember, if you watch or listen to our first podcast, we talked about how it just hits your brain and hits your brain and hits your brain. I'm going to throw something up before I forget. This is a picture, so pay attention for a sec. And people always so, complain that they can't go vegan, right? We do. We hear this from our friends all the time. Oh, well, we're not rich like you. We can't be vegan. We are the we are the <laughs> so cheapest. Terrible. We live under the poverty it's level. Like, so. we, we live on like $100 of potatoes and rice a, a month. Are you kidding me? Um, so if you, if you're driving, you can't see it. It is a picture of a person that says I'd go vegan, but I can't afford rice and vegetables. And they're, <laughs> He's like they're smoking a, a cigarette with a $1,300 iPhone and drinking a beer at the same time. It's like, yeah, you got money. You just don't spend it on your health. You're now a pack of cigarettes is what anywhere from like seven to $10 now. That's, and that's a day for that's, most people. That's like, a, if you're a single guy, that's like almost a whole week of beans and rice. Mm -hmm. You could get two or three pounds of rice through and three pounds of beans. And that's eating as and... much as you wanted. I know. You'd be like, and then going out to drink. Yeah, yeah. Like, so you, insane. the people have money. Stop. Just stop. Get it's some just, help. It's just what you choose to spend it on. Yeah. We're going to, um, there's other things. There's a lot of hidden costs we haven't talked about, but if you, a lot of this, remember, we had a couple saving tips and then we got to like change your diet. But changing your diet saves money on lots of unseen things too. Most people that go on a plant-based diet don't need medications anymore. Like they get off their meds 
uh, usually, you know, it's doctor supervised. If you listen to this, don't just go off your meds or whatever. But the point is, is your blood gets healthy again. Your body gets healthy again. And you're like, I don't need this stuff anymore. And you go to your doctor and they take it off. And how much does that save? You know, oh, getting I can't off even the medication. Imagine. There's all these hidden costs that you can save money. I haven't seen a doctor in, I don't know. Forever. Like 13 years. I mean, that's it. Uh, so, Aside from you. Yeah, I mean, I see you every day. <laughs> So I, uh, I'm going to tell you, though, that there's, there's just a lot of unseen costs. Like we were talking about, if you batch cook, and, and then if you're not going out and eating at restaurants. Oh, that's the other thing. People oh think we're crazy. Oh, my gosh, because we know, don't the, ever go out to eat. The first two years we were together, we didn't go out at all, and people lost their mind. What do you mean you haven't been yeah. on a date? Like, we spend every waking moment together, and... We go on a walk if we want a date. You know, like, we go, like, we take the dog out. That's... I mean, we, we, you can do something romantic and fun that doesn't revolve around Everything money revolves food. around food now. Eating out. And, like, every event and revolves around if food. If you're losing weight, I, I mean, it is just so hard. It is such a landmine to go out and eat. We just have the tough love stance of it's no. not worth it. It's it's too much trouble. Like, people are like, you guys don't even go to a coffee shop? No. We don't go to a bagel shop. You, you get super fat eating at Starbucks. You know, don't. I don't. Well, like a frappuccino is 700 calories. It's caffeine like, is not great for you. And ridiculous. I do. So I grew, you know, I was Seattle in the 90s. Yeah, you, you were You know, there. like for the European coffee invasion, you know, Starbucks Central. And I had a massive coffee addiction. And over my lifetime, I've spent thousands of dollars on coffees. It's just not worth it. Yeah. And as your body heals, your vices. I don't you need, need the caffeine at less all. Less. Caffeine will mess you up. Cigarettes will mess you up. Alcohol will mess you up. You'll, you'll go out and drink and you'll be like, oh my gosh, I don't remember having a hangover like this. Yeah, because your liver's clean now. It's not going to tolerate we that have, crap. We have <laughs> drank twice in three years. And even then, it wasn't, it was like two drinks. Yeah. Maybe maybe two drinks in five years. When we say drank, we mean like a couple sips. So yeah, I mean like um, we shared half of a mimosa once. I think. Yeah. And, and it wasn't worth we, it. <laughs> it was not. It was more like for the taste. And then we have pre- people that have like given me mead. Mead, yeah. We had a couple so, people brew mead. Um, so when we go to the festival, like I'll have yeah. a drink of something. And what I mean by it, like a drink is like not a whole drink. Like somebody has a drink and I taste it. So say about the only alcohol we get is kombucha. And it's so small in that it's not even, I don't consider it. Well, and like, like I said, half the time we just take and the first brew time, and don't even get it. Yeah, so. we don't even go to the second brew for... So if you don't know much, again, we're going back into brewing, but you can make your kombucha taste like anything you want. And this is another saving money tip. Our vegetables, our, our fruit that is getting old winds up in our kombucha. Yep. So the pineapple it's that's too old. It's actually the sweetest. That's the best time to throw it in. And the, the oranges that were getting dry and funky, we throw them in the kombuchas and we brew with them. Because the kombucha doesn't care. So it's a great way. And also why I'm on that point, um, I forgot to mention this before. If you can buy an old school juicer, again, like $5 at the thrift store, juice your vegetables that are going old. Yep. Instead of just throwing them out, be like, you know what? I cannot eat all this cabbage. I cannot eat all this lettuce. There's no way I'm going to get all this in. You can drink it. You uh, the other thing you do down is and drink it. cabbage freezes wonderfully. Yeah, freeze everything. I just chop my, I shred mine up into uh, like uh, stir fry size pieces and it just goes in a bag in the freezer. So some of these strategies we gave you, you're going to have to invest a little money in the beginning, like buying uh, stuff to cook with, buying a deep freezer, maybe changing your fridge if it's outrageously expensive to run your fridge, that sort of stuff. Uh, you don't have to, but it does make it easier. But if you are going to start eating healthy and living healthy and, and losing weight, you're going to have to cook and you're going to need tools to cook. So you're just going to have to invest. And if money's that tight, go to thrift stores. So the I would say the one thing you can't really skip on is the frying pan. And that was only 25 bucks. It's not like. But I mean, you're going to spend that in oil anyway. You know, yeah, like... actually a few rounds of oil. Frying pan, some parchment paper. Air fryers. Air fryer. You can get any at any thrift store now. Yeah, people, it's the fad's over and people stopped. I guarantee, again, ask your friends, ask your parents. Somebody's got an appliance sitting in their garage that they are happy to give you. Oh, yeah, I have an air fryer. My mom gives us appliances all the time, if we ask. Oh, yeah. You know, Anytime we want anything. She doesn't use them anymore and they, she's happy to open the room up in her house. She's, she's like, like, I oh, just you didn't want to take- throw it out. There's been so many times I'll be like, oh, do you want this back? Just keep it at your house and I'll let you know when I want it. 
That's great. Like that's ours. So don't let money be the, the factor to stop you from eating healthy. And if you do it right, eating healthy is going to save you a ton of money once you get going. And if you're really, really, really cheap, just eat raw. Don't cook anything. Like just start eating fruits and vegetables and, and salads and don't worry about it. You don't have to worry about electricity that much, you know? Um, well, I mean, when we were out at the farm, rice and beans, oh. like we would open up a can of, we do it now, like cook a pot of rice and then just open a can of beans. We don't even heat it up. Just mix it no. in with the hot rice out of the rice cooker, a little dab of barbecue sauce. And you know, we, if you check our channel, we have an awesome barbecue sauce we make out of pineapple. It's fantastic. And uh, we use that stuff on everything. Yep. Like, you know, she's thinking about beans or rice, and that's so simple. It's, a, you know, 25 cents of rice, a dollar of beans. Uh, we'll eat, feed three of us twice, six meals out of that probably, yep. you know, and probably another 50 cents of barbecue sauce. And so that's really, really cheap. And the way we run stuff, too, and since we're off-grid, if you have some off-grid questions, we can we use our little blue eddies to run the ice if you don't know what that is, it's like a, a compact battery and you just plug it in the rice cooker and that's how you cook off grid sometimes. So we cook a lot just using solar panels and batteries. Yep. Um, you don't have to break out the wood. You don't have to boil your beans on a wood fire for an hour, you know. Although, don't get me the, wrong, the I'm not opposed to it. So it if we're already having... It's the dead of winter and the wood stove's going, I'm cooking on Yeah, it. I mean, the wood stove's going in the winter, so that's free. Like That's, that's free power that we that's don't... free power we're already paying for. So, yeah. Especially when solar is lower in the winter, you know. Yeah, we rotate around. So if you're interested in that, uh, if you didn't know, we also have a homesteading channel, but it's kind of quiet right now. Um, but you can check that out. I think I can drop that in the link, too. But it's it's just called Looptopia. If you want to find it on, it's pretty much on every platform. you have any last words about saving money? No. We'll probably just... come back with a, a second way to save money, but these are the big ones, I think. Right these the are good ones. If you have any yourself, leave it in the comments below. We're always looking for ways to save money. Yep. We'll probably do a whole nother session on how to pack and store food one day, probably, and that sort of thing. It's just, yeah, I have to say, like... Just buy when they're on sale and store the crud out of them. And, I mean, get a deep freezer so you can buy, you know, 200 pounds You know, and deep freezers are not expensive. We got... Them. We have three. And they were like two hundred dollars. And have no shame about it. Like we go to, we will go to Food Line <laughs> and buy almost all their sweet potatoes, and they'll they'll just fill it up the next day. You know they got more. We'll go to. We went one time to two different food lines and got. Yep. Got Although like we do get questions, pounds. they'll be like, "What are you doing? Oh, making potato salad for the church. Just yeah. tell them whatever <laughs> they want. We got a big potluck." You know, you know. I mean, I have at some point, boys, I'm like, you know, yeah. teenage boys always takes the the cake. Oh, teenage boys. Oh yeah, you need all this. So I, I think that's it. Uh, we love you guys. Hang in there. Please check out our other podcast. I was going to say podcast, but we only have one other out. There's only one. <laughs> but go roll into that. And uh, we hope, you know, starting a podcast, because right now we have a channel and they have recipes and stuff. And it, it, our channel is kind of for fun. It doesn't get a lot of hits. It's not something we're making money on or anything like that. But uh, it does help keep us on track. It keeps us accountable, which is good. And we feel like we help a lot of people because people are watching us get thinner and they're like, what are you doing? And we'll be like, oh, we just had this recipe today and we'll share it out. We have a Telegram group where we share out a lot of our recipes and talk to people. And if you don't know what Telegram is, that's the little icon you're seeing on the screen that has the little paper airplane on the, on the blue circle. It is a free app you can do to, uh, it's like a messaging app. You go in there, we have a group. And you come talk to us and ask questions. And you just have to click the, when you join, you'll get like a message that welcomes you. And after that message is the thing that says, click here to prove I'm human, to make sure you're not a spam bot or a robot. Once you click that, it'll take you like a CAPTCHA and you, you, you fill that out. It's like a little test to make sure you're, you're a real person. And then you're in the group and it's free and come and chit chat with us. Yep. So come join our Telegram group. You'll see the description below. We're happy to answer any questions. And feel free to share the podcast. We appreciate uh, letting people know it's it's hard to start something from scratch. And if this is useful information, pass it on. All right. We love you. Stay on track. Stay focused. Save money. That's it. Be a double cheapskate. <laughs> Bye.